Hey everyone, Shane with Optimal Dwelling Spaces. I am out today in Forest Grove, Oregon in a new subdivision. You can see some of the finished homes in the background on this very cold and foggy day. Uh, the lot I'm standing on is actually one that a client of mine is considering building a home on, but they noticed a problem, had some serious concerns, and it is right here behind me. See those power lines back there? It's a little hard to see with the fog, but just a couple hundred feet from this lot is a major transmission line, 115 kilovolts or 115,000 volts, and it is uh, feeding a city that's far away from here, but it runs just a couple of hundred feet from this potential property. So the question is, are these lines going to make this property unsafe, and how do we know? Let me unpack that for you. So when you go to measure a magnetic field, you're going to need a Gauss meter, an alternating current or AC Gauss meter in this case. And there's two main types. There are three axis, which will take essentially all of the different directions that radiation could be coming towards the meter and computing that into one number for you. Uh, or there can be single axis meters like this one from gigahertz solutions. And this is going to have you know, just one orientation on the sensor here. It's going to sit like this in the meter. So, for example, with the power line, if, if we wanted to just see what that power line is doing, and the power line's over that way, the field from the power line, as I said earlier, comes off the line perpendicularly in all directions, and it kind of rotates like this 60 times a second. And so we're going to want to orient our meter sensor so that that field washes over it directly. If you were to rotate the meter, that field is not going to hit it the same way and the meter is not going to read it the same way. So if you have a single axis meter, which is just fine for this type of work, then you're going to want to put it facing front to back the power line or the source that you're interested in. I would recommend for this type of setting actually a three axis meter. So there's some very good ones out there. This is a prograde from Gigahertz Solutions. And why we want a three axis meter in this case is because the power line is not the only source in play for this lot. We also have, you can see these green boxes here in the frame. Uh, those are the transformers from the residential supply to all the homes in the neighborhood. And they're gonna run along the street here in front of the homes. And so that could also be adding to the radiation that is experienced inside this home. And it could definitely put it over the top in terms of being unsafe and something that you can't mitigate effectively. All right, so we're gonna start right along the street here so that we are catching the influence from this residential power delivery that's under the ground. And we're gonna take a variety of readings throughout the, the lot, uh, getting closer and further away from this source as well as the power lines. We're gonna map it all out and then we'll have a good feeling for exactly how strong the radiation is at, at various levels in, in this property. So essentially I'm just gonna turn my meter on like I have here. I'm going to hold it out in front and we're just gonna walk. Right now we're going towards the line. We're about 0.4 milligauss. And we're just going to head towards the power lines. And you can see as I get closer to this transformer, I'm definitely picking up some of that influence. But we're going to just keep walking. And as we would expect, we get closer to this power line. And our radiation profile of strength is increasing quite a bit. We're up to 8.8 .8 milligauss. Now we're over one milligauss. And we're seeing a very predictable increase as we near the power line. All right, for our next run of numbers, I've stepped towards the back of the property, maybe 20 feet. So I'm a little further away from that residential um, underground power feed. 
and we're going to rinse and repeat the process. So back here starting off, we're about the same as we were, so that might tell us we're getting pretty minimal effect from the residential feed. And then we're just going to walk again towards the power lines. The goal in doing this is to see if we can find a predictable change in the radiation against the proximity to the power line. All right, round three, we're about 40 feet, 50 feet now from where we started, and we're going to do this process again. At all three lines of measurement on the property, the same predictable increase as we got closer to the power line was noted. And this strongly indicates that the power line is the strongest and actually only source. So once you have your data points, you've mapped them out, uh, you can kind of look at the overall situation for a lot property a home in question and it's sometimes helpful to lay it out on a spreadsheet like i've done here and uh, i've got side by side to show you it's a little hard to see but um, bear with me on that here is our google satellite map and you've got the nine locations one two three four five six seven eight nine that i took reads at the levels of magnetic field are noted here for each of those locations. And I've color coded them against the building biology guidelines, which are on this little card here. We're looking at the middle row, which is M or magnetic. And so with this, we can see the overall picture of this uh, potential property we were looking at. And unfortunately, there are no areas in the green zone, which is a no concern level. Everything is in the slight to severe. And although two thirds, roughly, you know, the furthest away from the power lines are, are only in the slight concern range, the catch here is that this number can vary with season and with time of day. So if it's really cold or really hot, and we've got a lot of furnaces or air conditioners running. Um, more current can be drawn into the neighborhood. Uh, these lines don't serve this neighborhood. They actually serve a nearby town, but the, the same effect is true. Likewise, certain times of the day, for example, in the evening when everybody comes home and maybe turns on the oven or, or the cooktop, uh, this similar thing can happen. So these values, depending on time of day and season, could actually increase as much as 50%. So that would make the picture for building a home on this property even grimmer. And uh, as we discussed earlier in the video, it's generally not realistic to shield from a magnetic field with a source of a power line like this. It's just too big, too widespread. And the field is so strong because of the level, the high level of current that it's really not a, a realistic proposition to try and shield from this. So uh, in the, this case, what I recommended to the clients was that they look elsewhere for buildable lots. And one other thing you can do with Google Maps here, you can map out the distance and see about how far away they were. So their home is about 215 feet or so from the lines. And to get into a safer zone, you know, you're going to want to be about 300 feet or so. So there are other spots in the subdivision that might work. Um, and that's kind of how I look at the whole can of worms here when trying to evaluate the influence of a magnetic field. And again, we're getting these bands of overall strength that are diminishing as we move east or west of the power lines because that's the direction the radiation comes off of. So thanks for checking this video out. If you found it at all helpful, I'd just love it if you would subscribe or leave a comment, um, anything to support the channel and to support my work in this regard. And of course, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or leave a comment and I will get back to you just as soon as possible. Thanks.